Well, we haven't done one of these in a long time. Yay! Kurzum and I thought we would do a little Q&A here yes. and tackle some questions. Mm -hmm. Since it has been such a long time, we figured there are different questions. Yes, we went on Instagram and asked people to like send us some questions. So we got a lot of good questions, including the question in the title. Starting off strong, question number one. <laughs> Holy moly, there's a lot. I know. We did not go through any of these yet, so we're just gonna be like looking and just doing the best <laughs> questions. Okay, so the first one. Dating versus marriage, which is better? Ooh. Oh, that, see that's tough because I just feel like they're kind of the same. The difference mainly is like we live together, we have a career going, we're working towards building a family, and I feel like we did not do that obviously yeah. while we were dating so i guess marriage is better because like you have your person you're set like he's not going anywhere i'm not going anywhere and so like feeling settled in life and not searching is nice yeah i think they both have their pros so marriage yeah i agree with everything she said like it's beautiful just having a person that you are completely committed to and, mm -hmm. and together you build something great to together and i think that's great and i the context with dating is a little bit different because you're finding out if that person is that person yeah but also with dating there's that like window of discovery you know i could ask you any question while we were dating and mm -hmm. learn everything about you and yeah. everything was new mm -hmm. but i know so much about you now so like learning about each other is more about like going through life now and learning how to be with each other and, and like how we deal with different life situations like mm -hmm. that only happen you know when you yeah. move across the country and th those kind of things yeah it's uh it's hard to replicate that spark of like the first date you know yeah it, it's like we still have a spark but it's just different mm -hmm. like it's very different like those butterflies you get when you first start dating someone mm -hmm. and like the the unknown of it all is like really nice and i do like that but i also love the sparks that we get now that we're married and like mm -hmm. the comfort of it all it's just so yeah. different and we when we accomplish things together yeah that's really cool that makes me feel like dang this is awesome yeah we, we found each other mm -hmm. i mean we do talk about it all the time i know it's super corny and i think a lot of other, other couples do this too but we're genuinely like how do we not like hate each other by now I know. Like, we spend so much time together we just love each other and like i believe in soulmates now yeah you know? uh-huh we're like we're like attached at the hip it's a little <laughs> it's a little ridiculous <laughs> we need to do better because it's like dude it's like who are your friends uh here here we are I'm it's here. just like we need we need to branch out i know we need to but like we're just so comfortable like i'm just i'm happy with our situation we got sophie yeah this, she's our friend yeah she's our friend okay next um, um proud of him for hitting an acting gig thank you how and when can we see the short film he was in um, yeah, so the short film, by the way, it's called Undecided. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited about it. We actually saw the scene that I was in. I thought it came together pretty well. I was mm -hmm. very surprised at how hard it was for me to watch myself. I was extremely- Very critical. Yeah, very, very critical. It's hard not to just judge how I was acting and like try to yeah. just absorb the scene for what it was. Anyway, we're submitting it to short films and the, the short film festival circuit will run for about a year. Mm -hmm. And so we can't release it publicly while it's on the circuit. And then once the circuit is up, then we can. So yeah. about a year's time. I know that's a long time for now, but that's just how this industry works, so. Yeah. And Cole says we, because he is also an executive producer on the film. So yeah. he has a lot of skin in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're excited. So mm -hmm. as soon as it's released publicly, we'll tell you all, it's just gonna be a while. It'll and, be a little while. And hopefully by that time, Cole will have other roles under his belt too, so. That's the idea. So this question says, do you plan on making California a permanent place to live? <laughs> That's a tricky question because like we can't predict the future. And so who knows if it'll be permanent. Right. But what I will say is that right now it is permanent. Right now we're going to be here for a very, 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 very long time. We love it. So unless something happens in the near future, you can expect to see us in California for a long time. <laughs> yeah. It's nice. We it like it. We like it here. Yeah. The opportunity, the energy, the, the weather. Mm -hmm. It's all great. We've tried to predict our long-term future in the past mm -hmm. and every time we've been wrong. Yeah. So we're just going to continue doing what we want to do and letting the world take us in the direction it wants to take us. Exactly. So that's, far that's worked out for us. So yeah. we're going to continue. Exactly. That's all you can do. But yeah. So to answer mm -hmm. your question for now, it is permanent. For now. Permanent. For now. <laughs> <laughs> So this question says, 
Would Cole have married outside his race if he hadn't hurt himself? We get so much like race related questions and it's just so annoying. People say like he wouldn't be with her if he weren't in a wheelchair. They even say it about you too. Like you wanted a white man so bad you settled for a guy in a wheelchair. Yeah, apparently I can't get men. And <laughs> it, 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 like, like even in, that's just so dumb. I know. I just have no words for those comments. Like one, I can get a man. Oh yeah. And Cole's a catch, and I am so lucky to have him. Mm -hmm. Two, same with Cole. Cole can get a woman. Cole did not settle. Like, Cole's had lots of girlfriends. Let me tell you that. He tries to act like he did, Us. but he had, he had people very interested. But also, it begs the question, what does my disability have to do with who I'm attracted to? Exactly. It has nothing to do with that. Really you know, doesn't. my brain is the same brain when I was able-bodied as it is disabled. Yeah. I'm just attracted to her because she's freaking gorgeous and a really dope person on the inside and out. So like, <laughs> what does being in a wheelchair have yeah. anything to do with that? It's like, a, it's like they assume, oh, he broke his neck. He must magically like black women now or magically like white <laughs> women. Like, and you also gotta remember, Cole got injured at 16 years old. I had hardly really explored anything at that point in my life. Yeah. And, cause I, and then after my injury, I wasn't putting myself out there. And it took me a long time to regain like the confidence, you know, yeah. and feel worthy as a partner. So once I put myself out there again, I just went for what I found to be beautiful and worthy of love as well. And yeah. so I ended up with charisma because she is both of those things. Thank you. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just hate that question. It's so annoying. I know, we get it all the time. We're together because we love each other, regardless of race, regardless of disability, regardless of everything. We just love who the person is. And that's and all that matters. We're incredibly compatible. Yeah, that too. Like soulmates. Legit. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Someone said, I'm dating a quadriplegic. What are some fun things you guys like to do together? Mm. I need ideas. Mm. Um, so some of our favorite things, museums. Museums? Museums? Museum. Museum. Museums. I love going to a museum. <laughs> we had a great time at that museum. Whatever, man. <laughs> Art shows, you know, yeah. concerts. Those are like generally accessible. Sporting events are pretty good too. Like a football mm -hmm. game, they usually have an accessible section. Where you live obviously has to do a lot with like what activities there are. But like lots of beaches, if you're near a beach, if you contact a local like fire department or just look for rental places, like oftentimes they'll have a beach wheelchair. So that that's a fun trip to go on. We're big foodies, so we're always going to restaurants and like yeah. that's a great time for us. Even like the the movie theaters with food, we love doing that. Yeah. It's like a time activity so yeah we do we do lots of stuff concerts I had this idea when I was uh, injured like for for years after my injury that venues would be really difficult for me I found that to not be the case in fact venues are typically very accessible like we went to a football game and right behind the accessible seating was the accessible family bathroom and I just went right back and forth there wasn't a line yeah. I had all the we had all the space we needed in there and it was super convenient there's a lot out there I would I would say just go for it and uh, if you fail, that's fine, whatever. Just make an adventure out of failing. But you might find that whatever you're wanting to do is more accessible than you think it is. Yeah. So that's a little rant about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> this question um, I knew I would get, but Charisma, how's your secret project going? It's going well. <laughs> I literally just had a meeting today, like an hour and a half meeting. I'm gonna be having meetings weekly. It's going really fast. We're diving into it. And so you'll find out before you know it. I mean, I would assume I will be able to announce at the beginning, near the beginning of next year, like January, February. So that's when I'll finally be able to be able to announce it and that's when I will feel comfortable. Yeah, thank you for checking in. It's going really well. <laughs> so it is, it hasn't come to a halt. It is progressed and we're going full steam. The secret project is <laughs> I know he, he bleeped that out, so <laughs> you don't know what he said, but he totally said it. Oh, I cannot with him. <laughs> Next. <laughs> okay, this is a good question. What's the hardest part of being a full-time caregiver slash lover and tips to avoid stress? Primarily um, lover though, right? I'm primarily a lover. Um, so when it comes to caregiving, I think the hardest part is 
remembering to take care of yourself. After a while, you get kind of get into a routine and Cole and I have like a really good routine and it's just what we're used to. And then the physical strain for me isn't like super high just because Cole is fairly independent. Like he needs help with, you know, some things, but it's not all like everything. Like there's some things that Cole can do independently. So it's not physically straining. It's more like the mental like tired, just being tired. But I'm really good at paying attention to my body, paying attention to my needs, expressing that to Cole. You know, if I'm just too tired, we'll stay in bed all day, especially on the weekend. Like if we can afford to, like we'll stay in bed all day, I'll do nothing. He won't get up, we'll just watch movies, eat in bed. I love that. And we both love it. And it's just like, it'll help me just like kind of reset. Tips to avoid stress, I think communication. I think that's the best way you could avoid stress is communicating your needs whenever you're feeling burnout or you're feeling frustrated, being honest with those feelings and addressing it. Don't let it boil up. Don't let it get to a point where you can't go back, like address it. As soon as you start feeling those stressors or those frustrations, address it, deal with it so you can move on. Don't sweep things under the rug because that's just never helpful in any part of life, but especially as a caregiver. The open part is really important with the communication, like being yeah. transparent, because I mean, you may be communicating things, but if it's not clear, then whoever you're caring for may not truly understand the extent of how you're feeling. Yeah. Um, so transparent communication is the best policy. Yeah, and I think a lot of caregivers like are afraid to be transparent and to communicate because they don't want the person they're caring for to feel like a burden. And I think there's a good like sweet spot with that. Like you can communicate how you're feeling without making someone feel like a burden or might making someone feel bad for, you know, needing help. I think there's a way to do it and a way not to do it. So yeah, just being mindful with how you're expressing your feelings and your needs. And usually people are understanding. Everyone needs a break from pretty much every job that exists. There's a burnout in any job. And yeah. so always being mindful and taking breaks. Yeah, well said. Thank you. <laughs> I keep doing those awkward thumbs up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so this question says, what's one project you both like to take on in LA? Well, I'm already working on my project, so. <laughs> oh, it's the one that I was just telling you about. I cannot. Yes, I'm already working on my project. Um, so yeah, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Well, I think it's talking about like a joint project. That's kind of my impression. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. So I think jointly we had talked about having an event mm -hmm. um, here out in LA. And I think that's one thing that we want to do. We want to have an event for disabled creators to have a place to go to learn. And it's just like the arts, disabled dancers, creators, writers, musicians, like all of the arts. Yeah. So just really early idea, but um, we would like to do that. That would definitely help out with more people with disabilities becoming, you know, content creators, actors, writers, photographers, yeah. models. And that's important. We need that representation. So mm -hmm. however we can support that, we want to. Another thing we'd both like to do together is to create our own like short film, build a team of people, put something together and really, really try to do a good job of it and see mm -hmm. how we are when it comes to like short filmmaking. You yeah. know? So that's another big project we'll be maybe working on in 2023, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, another question, Cole, why don't you drive your truck anymore? Well, we do have the truck here in LA. Yes. The short answer is, frankly, we don't go that many places. We drive like once or twice a week. Yeah, it's, it. it's not a lot of driving. Where we live, there's a lot of stores and shops and stuff in close proximity, even restaurants. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when we go out to eat or, or shop or whatever, we're just rolling there. Like I'll, I'll just get in my power chair mm -hmm. and uh, she'll sit on my lap or in the back and then we'll just, busted down the sidewalk and they keep the sidewalks nice and fresh here. They just did like redid the whole street, which I love. Yeah. So yeah, I don't, I don't really feel like a huge need to drive. Plus the traffic here is a different beast. Stop and go traffic was always the bane of my existence in Virginia when I was driving. We, we talked about earlier, maybe moving out to the suburbs at some point, that might be when I get back into driving. But at this point, it's just not super necessary. Yeah, I barely drive. Yeah. So, I mean, if you ask Cole about his truck, I mean, shoot, I drive the van, like not much at all. And now I have my Lexus out here, but I will be <laughs> driving that. Um, like if I want to run to the store quickly, it's easier to drive my Lexus than a big old van. My Lexus is like half the size of that van. It's ridiculous. Um, so it's easier to whip my little Lexus around, yeah. but yeah. 
So another question is asking what our professions are. And we get this question a lot. Like a lot of people ask, what do you do full time? Or like, I see Cole's doing this. What does Charisma do? <laughs> like, well, apparently nothing. Um, <laughs> and so yeah, full time, we're both content creators. And so YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, like we share our lives. And that's what we do full time. And we use our platforms to be educational, to raise awareness, to just kind of normalize our relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and then we do other things. Yeah. So acting is becoming more and more a part of the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, we have speaking engagements. We just did one with Hilton. Uh, we speak to a lot of corporations about like ableism in the workplace and how to just be better allies for the disabled community. Yeah, and similarly, uh, like consulting work, we talk to a lot of brands about accessibility, up and coming brands, established brands, outreach. I feel like we're still very much in touch with the community and like I'm always answering emails from people. It's a mixed bag, but mm. at the top of the pyramid, I'd say, is content creation. No, you can't think about it too long. You're No, okay. come on, read okay. it. What's a quality in one person that helps balance the other out in your relationship slash life? So should I answer the question based off a quality that you have and vice versa? I don't know, you just go first so I can think longer. No, but like, should, is that how I should answer it? Like your equality that you have that balances us out? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So I think a quality that Cole has that balances us out in the relationship uh, would be like patience. And yeah, patience is like a really big one, especially like in situations where something's like inaccessible or someone is just like being ableist. And I just get really frustrated and I don't have like, much patience when it comes to that and so like cole is like a really really good at balancing that out um and just like being able to ignore negative comments like he's really good at that and so i don't know that's that's really helpful and then just like patience with me too was I, that, wait was that a good one yeah i think so is that good okay I, I try to be patient yeah patience is a virtue as my parents said yeah i, I might think everyone says that but everyone does say that <laughs> i might think of another one but you answer I think what's really critical for our relationship, it's more specific, I think, but just like being organized and like on top of details. Unfortunately, yeah. that is not my forte. I'm working on that. Yeah. But man, do I struggle. Um, it's, a, it's a, yeah, it's a struggle. And so thank the Lord <laughs> that she's good at that stuff because otherwise, man, it would be a <laughs> show around here. Um, <laughs> So that that is that is crucial in our relationship. Yeah, no, I, I do. I am really good at like being organized. I have more of the type A personality when it comes to our business. But like when it comes to life, I'm not type A. I'm very type B. But when mm. but when it comes to our business, I'm very type A and I'm like really organized. Um, so yeah, I do appreciate that because I try really hard. And you do great. Thank and you. kind of like piggybacking off that the type A type B thing. I think it works well that like she is always like, let's do this, let's do that, let's do this. But thinking about plans for the next day, thinking about what we should do business wise, mm -hmm. life wise, like all this all the time, I'll have like 24 seven. Mm -hmm. And I'm not like that. I'm more like, let's get what we need to get done and then relax yeah. and just chill out for a while. Mm -hmm. So I think we end up falling somewhere in the middle where like we do put a lot on our plate, um, but at the same time we find the windows of relaxation as well. And if, if both of us were type A or both of us were type B, there wouldn't be that balance. Yeah, if it were just like all up to me, we would work nonstop and never take breaks. But if it were up to Cole, <laughs> we would just like chill all day long. So it's like we're perfect. Like we yeah. have that good middle ground. Yeah. So when it's <laughs> when it's time for a caregiver mental day, I'm very I immediately tell her, hey, just chill. Yeah. Just relax. Take yeah. the evening off. Take the afternoon off. Don't mm -hmm. think about work. Just take a nap, mm -hmm. and then I'll go do some work or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's nice. That happened the other day. I just like wasn't feeling good, and Cole was like, just take a day off, and I was like, thank you. Mm -hmm. Also, another thing about Cole. Cole is more like the more level-headed person in the relationship. And so like sometimes I could be like more emotional and so Cole like always brings me down to like a good level. Like if I get like high anxiety, especially flying, I get extremely anxious when I fly. And so Cole's always there to like calm me down or if I'm like really frustrated, like overwhelmingly frustrated in a situation, like he's always there to like calm me down. And so like if he had high emotions and I had high emotions, I would just be a lot. He definitely balances me out when I get like super anxious and frustrated or overwhelmed in a situation. Yeah. It's just soulmate stuff, you know, compatibility. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hey, once you find your soulmate, you guys like are just like in sync. It's like the yin and yang, you balance each other out. Well, I think those were all the, the questions. They were great questions. Obviously we didn't answer them all because there were like 70 people gave us. So uh, we answered like seven or something. There are a lot of repeats in there. So yeah. Hopefully this covered a lot. Yeah, thank you for submitting the questions. Um, mm -hmm. And we're excited to just keep showing you our day-to-day -day life. A lot of exciting things are coming up. We're traveling again after taking a little bit of a break. We're back on the road. Um, yeah. So if there are any questions that we completely missed that you're curious about, drop them in the comments. Mm -hmm. I'll go through there and uh, respond to peeps. Yeah. So um, yes, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Yes, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. And stay positive. Woo. Peace out. <laughs> Ugh, on to Smart. task number two. Wait, can I do like bunny ears? Oh, I can't do it. I'm you have to be behind. Yeah, you're right.